Welcome to this StatsCast. In this StatsCast we're going to look at experimental units and observational units and our first example comes from an excellent book on experimental design. The author here is discussing a situation that he had encountered. Um, just reading the text it says a graduate student was studying the shape of sponge cells to see whether the shapes of the cells depended on the colour of the sponge and the location of the cells. He painstakingly measured hundreds of cells under a microscope but unfortunately he had based his experimental plan on bad advice. All his hundreds of cells came from just two sponges, one white and one green. The experimental unit is the smallest unit attached to a treatment independently of other units. And in this case the treatment is the colour of the sponge. Now there are only two sponges attached to each, each treatment. One white and one green. So there's only two experimental units. An observational unit is the smallest object that we actually measure. We can measure the shape of every cell we collect from a sponge. And this is exactly what he's done. He's done this hundreds of times. But what we really have is lots of measurements about just two sponges. We know a lot about those two sponges but very little about sponges in general because we've only studied one white and one green sponge. He only had two experimental units. A far better study would have had a number of experimental units, a lot of sponges if you like, so that we'd have a lot of information about lots of sponges and hence sponges in general. Our second example comes from a crop sciences paper. In this example seedlings were grown in a large tray, something like this. And this large tray had eight inner trays call this an inner tray. And each one of those inner trays had six cells where something was planted, a seedling was planted. Now the inner trays are separated by all this circulation area. The purpose of this was so that each inner tray was acting independently of the others. Each plant in the same inner tray is actually competing for the same soil, uh, the same moisture content in the soil, the same nutrients in the soil, and this means that within each of these inner trays the seedlings are not acting independently of the others. They're all competing for the same nutrients, the same soil moisture. However, each one of these inner trays is acting independently of the other inner trays. The plants in this inner tray here are not trying to compete for the same nutrients and the same soil moisture as those in this other inner tray. Since an experimental unit is the smallest unit attached to a treatment independently of the other units, in this case each inner tray is acting as an experimental unit. An observational unit is the smallest object measured. This means that each seedling here is an inner tray because we can record whether each one of these individual seedlings lives or dies in the certain circumstances that they're looking at in this situation. 